I was a student for five years, and with that comes a lot of exams. My favorite strategy for studying for courses that have a lot of content is to make summary notes for each chapter. I would then summarize those notes even further. Every time I went through the information, it stuck in my brain just a little bit more. And by the end, I had very effective notes for going over the most important content very quickly. My favorite studying technique actually is to take big blocks of material and break it down into smaller blocks and then study over periods of time and take breaks because the break makes it all worthwhile. If you know you put in another hour of good hard studying and then you give yourself a treat like a favorite food or you go for a run or you watch a funny video, whatever you like to do, it kind of makes it all worthwhile. And that way you break down big blocks of material, which can be overwhelming, into really manageable chunks. When I was younger, my favorite study technique was wait until the last minute and then cram. But these days that I'm older, I actually, um, actually will schedule a time to study, so even a week or so in advance. Um, so that's kind of my, the framework for my technique and the studying is, I think most, some people say that they can study with music on or in front of a TV or whatever. I, I, I really need to have silence and um, seclusion. That's my, that's my study retreat. So my favorite study technique is called read, write, say. So the idea is that you read through all your lecture notes, all of your text notes from the textbook, uh, anything from old quizzes, old exams, assignments, that kind of a thing. And you read through them and while you're reading through them, you write out new study notes. So they're kind of more compressed. There aren't quite as many details, but the idea is that you have enough on there that you're able to um, flesh out any particular concept um, in as much detail as you need. And then from those study notes, um, you read through them again, you write anything else that you need to sort of any additions that you need to help remember things, anything like that. And then you in particular say them out loud. So by reading them out just like in your head, but then also out loud, it's another way of helping to sort of remember those concepts and uh, remember uh, things when it comes to the exam. It kind of depends on the type of material and the type of exam uh, that I'm preparing for. So if it's an exam that's going to involve um, multiple choice or kind of rote memory answers, then I'll just use a lot of repetition. It's the same technique I would use to learn lines in a script for a play. Lots of repetition seems to work very well for me. Um, but that isn't a good method to study uh, for essay questions and more complicated exams. In those cases, I use, um, I try to use some kind of outline or some kind of mnemonic, so little tricks that can help me remember the outline. So at least I know the major points that I need to think about and talk about in an essay question. Well, when it comes to studying, it's not so much a favorite technique, but more of a favorite time of day. I like getting up really early and studying first thing in the day so my mind is clear and things, ideas can sink in a little bit. And then at the end of the day, before I go to bed, I'll usually review my notes one more time, hoping that things will percolate overnight. My favorite study technique, well, it's been a long time since I wrote an exam. The last one, I think it was... Uh, the the comprehensive for my PhD, which is a long time ago, um, probably you know before most of uh, most of you guys were born. Uh, my but my favorite technique is to find a quiet quiet space. Um, I'm a night owl, so it is usually after ten o'clock in the night when I sit at my dining table, um, send my family to sleep, and then uh, I just study. I use note cards. I also will have to write it down. Whatever I read, I write it down, uh, and that kind of goes into my mind. And it's fairly, uh, fairly uh, long-term memory. Even if I do that, uh, if I commit to writing, so so that is how I, I got through my PhD. Yeah. I guess it depends on what you're studying for. But for me, um, I did a lot of humanities. I did my history degree and then an education degree. 
and then master's of religious education. And I was thinking about how <laughs> in my career as an arts student, I was like, B minus student. <laughs> <laughs> but by the time I got to my master's, I, I, I received a master's with distinction. So I was like, there must be something different between what I was doing and later on. And I think, um, but, the, but, the, but the basic stuff was the same in terms of if I had to, um, if I had to prepare for a test where there was lots of notes to sort of go over and think, um, how am I going to retain this information? I wrote them out again. I rewrote them. And that was very helpful for me. It's not helpful for everybody, I guess, but for me, it was really good to sort of go over it again. And then when I went to sit down for the exam moment, it was like, it's in there. I wasn't sure where it was, but <laughs> it was in there somewhere. <laughs> so for me, that was kind of a helpful thing. 